Hi everyone, welcome to First Timers Homes. I'm Zach and this video is going step by step as I replace the sensors on my old Genie garage door opener system. In the description, there is a list along with links of all of the tools that I'm gonna use in this project. A couple of signs that the sensors might need to be fixed are if the door will open but not close unless you hold down the button on the wall console, or if the red LED on the source is blinking two, three, or four times. If you're not sure if sensors are your problem, I made a video that walks through troubleshooting the entire system that will also be linked. All right, let's get started. First, get your sensors from Genie. It's gonna come with a source and a receiver, along with four quarter by one and a quarter lag screws. Make sure that you have a source and a sensor, and you can tell the difference by the LEDs on the top. The source will be red, and the sensor will be green. First, I'm unplugging the system. Next, I'm removing the sensors from the old brackets and removing the wires using a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm planning on reusing the old wires because I think they're still good and they're non-polar, so I don't have to worry about mixing them up because they can be attached to either terminal on the new sensors. And now I'm gonna locate the new mounting location. Genie recommends that the top of the bracket be about six inches above the floor and no less than five. I'm reusing the old locations as a reference. And make sure to check and mark both sides. And remove the old brackets. This bracket was mounted using plastic inserts inserted into holes drilled into the concrete. So I'm gonna to try to reuse those. If you don't have those, you may need to try to drill new holes or fill the old ones and re-drill them in order for the thread to get a good grip on the new screws. Now I'm gonna check the beam path from the new mounting location to make sure that it's unobstructed. This looks pretty good, but if you need it, Genie sells bracket extensions to extend these from the wall, or you could also use a block of wood. And as a last resort, you could mount them on the floor as well. Next, I'm gonna position and attach the new sensors. I'm gonna to try to use the same holes from the old sensors to make the alignment easy. And make sure you note which one is the source, which is the one with the red LED, and the one that is the sensor, which is the one with the green LED, and put them in the right position to reduce sun interference as much as possible. Reusing the old holes worked well here, and the sensor is nice and sturdy on the wall. If that didn't work for you, you may need to mount the sensor in a new position. A 1 8 inch drill bit can be used to drill new pilot holes. Next, I'm gonna reattach the wires to the terminal. I've used a pair of wire strippers to give myself a little extra copper on the wires themselves. So what I'm gonna do is push them down from the top on the terminal, wrap them around the screw, and then tighten them down. There are a couple holes in the bracket to push the wires through and then wrap around the sensor for better cable management. My cables weren't long enough to do that, so I just tried to route them cleanly along the bracket and then attach them to the terminals. I did the same thing on the other side. Now I'll plug it back in and check the LEDs to make sure they're lit up. Both look good here, but if the red one was blinking, I would check alignment or if neither lit up, I would check for power and wiring issues. And the last thing I'm going to do is test it by opening the door and then closing it and blocking the beam to see if the door stops. If it all works out and you can put the new sensors in the exact same spot as the old sensors using the old holes, you can get away with using just a screwdriver and the new sensors for this project. If you do end up needing to move your sensors, you might need to mark the new locations and drill some new pilot holes. If you're gonna need to do any wire stripping or modification, you might need some wire strippers. And if you are actually gonna have to drill new holes and put new screws into the concrete, you may need some concrete specific screws, drill bits, and filler or crack repair. All in all, if you're able to swap the new sensors right into the spot of the old ones using the same holes, this should only take you about 15 minutes. If you have some modifications to do, you should still be able to knock this out within about an hour. And that's it. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna stay up to speed with future projects, subscribe. Thanks for watching.